Genre is a concept that we're all familiar with as readers. It's a way to categorize books so that in the vast bookstore, whether it's virtual or brick and mortar, readers know where to go to find the type of story that they're looking for. But how helpful are these categories, the, these genres to us as writers? How does understanding what genre we're writing in help us to plan the story that we're writing? That's where Sean Coyne's Story Grid comes in. This book helped me understand as a writer what genre meant, and I think gives a much better definition of genre for writers and is much more helpful for writers than what we know as readers. Coyne views genre as absolutely fundamental. This is the starting point. When you are setting out to write a story, you must understand what genre you're writing in. And if you say, hey, well, I don't write genre, you're wrong. You just don't know it yet. Hey, -o, Stunt Reader here. The aim of this channel is to help you level up your craft as a novelist by learning to actively read novels in your genre and out, both classic and contemporary, to understand what it is about these stories that makes them so emotionally compelling to so many people. If that's of interest to you, please subscribe and ding the notification bell so you'll be sure to know when I upload my next video. Active reading is one of the easiest and most reliable ways to take your writing skills to the next level. So let's get reading. So The Story Grid by Sean Coyne with the subtitle, What Good Editors Know. Sean Coyne is an editor and has clearly spent a lot of time, has a lot of experience with making manuscripts, making stories successful. And he spent a lot of time doing it, a lot of time thinking about it in a more abstract sense as well. There are a lot of components to it, but the one that I want to talk about today is genre. His genres do not look, there's some overlap between the genres that you know from the bookstore, but they're, they don't look entirely like that. He's got five different parts to genre, and I guess that's why they made this book this awkward size. I, it's like an elementary school workbook. I, I hate the size, but um, you have these different different areas, but this one up here, the content genre, is the one that is most similar to what what we're thinking of when we think about genre as readers. And there are some external genres. We've got horror, action, crime, performance, western, thriller, war, society, and love. These are all different subgenres that branch off from those genres. And then there are three internal genres. You've got worldview, you've got society, and you've got morality. So Sean's concept of genre is that each genre contains about a handful of scenes, four to seven, five to eight, something like that, depending upon the genre. These scenes that must be in there, absolutely must be in there. And if they're not, the reader isn't going to necessarily say, oh, well, I didn't like this because it didn't have the hero at the mercy of the villain scene. But they'll come away from the book thinking, ah, something just wasn't quite right. That just really didn't deliver. It didn't quite satisfy. And the reason why they'll be thinking this is because it, it was missing this key or, or what Sean calls an obligatory scene. So each genre has certain obligatory scenes, a handful of obligatory scenes that must be in there. And they also have a, hand, a similar handful, you know, four to seven, five to eight, something like that, of obligatory conventions. A convention is a plot device or a trope or a type of character or something along those lines. For example, a crime novel is going to have a red herring. A love story is going to have a rival character. And some of these seem obvious, but when you start getting into what these obligatory scenes are, a lot of times they aren't so obvious. If you're very familiar with the genre, and we all have our favorites, just as we all have genres that we wouldn't touch with a 10-foot pole, but if you're very familiar with your genre, a lot of these you'll have internalized. You'll, you'll know, you'll understand, oh, these are the things that must be present. And if you've been reading how-tos on your particular genre, they probably spell this out as well. Sean's point is that 
all genres have these certain obligatory scenes, all of them have these obligatory conventions, it's up to you to identify what those are, make sure that they're in there and not just in a perfunctory way, not in a, because if you just have them in there in a very hackneyed way, that's not gonna be satisfying to the reader at all because they'll have seen those solutions to those scenes before. Now, if this sounds formulaic, it is. It's a, it, it is a little bit formulaic, but the creative part of the writer then, the job of the writer, is to make sure that these scenes are included, but in an innovative, surprising, unexpected, fresh way. So this is a great way to plan your novel. You understand that there are certain scenes, certain beats that you must hit on the way to reaching that end. And you understand that there are certain conventions also, which could be characters, could be plot devices, could be tropes, you know have to be included as well. So you can, it's, this really helps you map out your story, whether if you're outlining, it can help you outline. I've got to get these five, six, seven, however many scenes in and then I need scenes to connect those, those set pieces, those high points. And if you're not an outliner, at least you have in the back of your mind, oh, these are the signposts that I need to get to. These are the landmarks that I need to reach as my story is progressing. And we'll get there when we get there. So when you look at it that way, it's not really not formulaic at all because you as the writer have to come up with new ways to, to convey these scenes that countless writers before you have already done. And this is where reading comes in. The best, uh, the best writers in a certain genre tend to be the biggest fans of that genre because they've grown up you know, internalizing all of these beats that have to be hit, all of these conventions that are gonna be in there. And they've, they've seen it all before. And so they know what has to be done, both what has to be in there, but also what has to be done differently. But what if you have an idea for a story that is not in a genre that's your lifelong favorite? What if you have an idea for a story that's in a completely different genre that you haven't tried before and that you haven't read that much in before? What if you just want to try something new? Or what if you are just starting out and don't really know what genre you might want to write in? Or, there, and this is another thing that is coming up a lot, especially on places like Amazon, there are constantly new genres and subgenres and sub subgenres that are sort of spontaneously evolving. So what if you want to write in one of those new genres? You know, steampunk wasn't a thing 20 years ago, or uh, maybe, maybe off on the years, but, uh, or urban fantasy now. You know, these are things that are, that are evolving as time goes on. You're going to have new genres, new subgenres coming up. So in these situations, how do I figure out what these obligatory scenes and obligatory conventions are so that I know I can know what to hit and what to include when I'm writing in that genre? And that's where that's where reading comes in. And Sean Coyne says as much like you need to read, you need to find the masterworks in your genre or your subgenre, and you need to read a bunch of them, as many as you can, and you need to take them apart and figure out what are the what are the scenes that these three, four, five, ten novels all have in common? And what are the conventions that these masterworks all have in common? And okay, after looking at these novels and taking them apart and figuring out what the common aspects are, now you have a list of obligatory scenes and obligatory conventions. And this is the, the great thing about StoryGrid uh, as far as encouraging reading, encouraging reading, not just reading, but reading the, the masterworks in a particular genre, being familiar with your genre. It's a, it's a must. I mean, you have to put in the work and this is goes back to Stephen King and what he said, where uh, he said, if you don't have the time to read, you don't have the time or the tools to write. Stunt reader, I don't have time to, to read all ten, to read 10 novels and figure that out for myself. Or I'm not sure if the scenes that I'm identifying as obligatory and the conventions I'm identifying as obligatory are the right ones. Can I get an expert opinion on what the on whether I'm on the right track or not. 
And that's fair. The StoryGrid website is a good tool for this because they have, for each of the content genres and subgenres, they have broken out in sort of blog posts by a number of different writers, not all by Sean Coyne, um, the obligatory scenes and obligatory conventions for that content subgenre. But you may find that some of these are better than others. Some of these are more comprehensive than others. Some genres lend themselves to this treatment a little bit more easily. Um, some genres are just inherently, I think, a little more uh, structured, whereas some genres, like a society novel, are a little more amorphous to start with. And that's where the website is a little disappointing. Sometimes, I mean, some of them essentially just say default to the hero's journey, which if you're an outliner, you may be looking at including anyway. The, the, this concept of genre, it plays quite well with the hero's journey. Like your hero at the mercy of the villain scene, which is an obligatory scene in like an action story, um, might correspond with the supreme ordeal in the hero's journey, or it might correspond with the resurrection phase of the hero's journey. So the, the, those two systems play very well together. The StoryGrid website also tends to rely very heavily on movies. I think just because they're quicker, they're easier, they're more familiar to more people. Even the choice of Silence of the Lambs, which was the, the story looked at in StoryGrid, great novel, but I'm sure it was chosen because of the very popular movie adaptation as well, just so everybody would have a uh, something familiar in mind as as he's working through taking apart the story. Again, the more we rely on movies to shape what we do as writers of prose fiction, the more we're going to be writing wordy screenplays, basically, uh, and not really getting into all of the things that a novel can do that a movie can't. It behooves you, if you're going to be working in a genre, to understand what the masterworks are and really study them three, five, ten, however many you have time for, you have to at least be familiar with some of the high points and have taken them apart to figure out how they work. Not so that you can plan yours out in a perfect copy, but just so that you start to internalize some of these structures as you're writing. Bottom line, we've all got to do our own work and do our own reading to be familiar with the masterworks in our genre to understand what the reader's expectations are going to be when they come to the story that we write. And so that we can meet those expectations and exceed those expectations. That, that is the goal. And then that reader will come away thinking, oh, that was, that was quite satisfying, which is, is what we want. I hope that this discussion of genre has been helpful to you. Are you familiar with the story grid? I, if you are, I would love to hear about it in the comments. Would you like to know more about story grid? I've gone pretty far in depth into it. I came to the story grid when a novel of mine had grown way too long and it really helped me wrestle it back into size, into shape. The podcast is great. I uh, can't recommend it highly enough. And especially if you're trying to work through the book, it, listening to Sean and Sean Coyne and Tim Grawl work on Tim's novel in progress and all of the the discussions that they get into it's quite entertaining and uh, illuminating so I highly recommend that I will definitely leave a link to Sean's video on genre which then links to other other introductory videos and I will link to the website and I will link to the podcast as well. And I can't recommend them highly enough. If you got some value from this, please like and subscribe and ding the notification bell. So you'll be sure to know when I upload my next video. Till then, keep reading, keep writing.